all the artists that have painted these kind of pictures throughout history don't sit down at a canvas and start painting away. Uh, there are a lot of uh, preliminary steps, and um, at least my way of working is very similar, I believe, to the old masters. Uh, I end up doing a bunch of little thumbnail sketches in charcoal on tracing paper or whatever uh, is handy. Uh, I'm just thinking in terms of an overall picture in my head. Uh, once I get that idea, I start to develop it a little more so you can sort of distinguish that it's a horse and a figure and whatever. And they start to take life in that way so that finally I do a, a, a sketch usually about so big, fitting on an 18 by 24 uh, uh, pad, I guess. And I, again, work in charcoal. Uh, and once I've got that fairly well worked out, I do another one on wrapping paper, brown craft paper. And the reason I do it for that is that you get value out of it too. The uh, brown wrapping paper is essentially a middle value. And artists, in terms of light and dark, you go from white to black, essentially, in, in values. And then using that middle value brown paper, I use chalk to give myself an indication of color uh, where it's the light and to set up a light and dark pattern in my own head. You'll see the final sketches have a grid on it that are exactly the same space. And then I do the same thing to the finished ca canvas so that I actually have worked on a couple of paintings this large. I call them my murals. And picture this being drawn right in half with a, a straight line, blank canvas, and then in half there, and then in half again, and in half again in each section. So then, if it looks good on the small version, it's going to come up exactly that's, that arrangement on the large one. So that that man's head hits exactly where it hit on the lower drawing. So you've got to make sure it looks good and you know what you're doing before you start on that. As far as the actual uh, uh, painting, this is a perfect, uh, perfect display, I might add. Uh, this is, is fortunately a uh, sculpture that I own uh, by Frederick Remington. I, I'm a bit of an art collector also. And um, if you look at this painting, and you look at the action of this horse, which is the main figure, especially those in back of uh, uh, the, the Bronco Buster here, you'll see the action is very similar. It's not the same angle, but that was the inspiration for the horse. The equipment on the horse is the kind of equipment that uh, is very easily accessible uh, if you have books and do the research or even end up with the saddle if it will help you. I've ended up with a large collection of props and costumes very much like Norman Rockwell did. I learned that reading about Norman Rockwell. Once you're painting into it, you're not really sure what you're going to do, but you're using some sort of shapes as designs so that, for example, that branch is helping to lead your eye in. There are, there are just a bunch of uh, the, the, the broken wheel at an angle prevents your eye, so to speak, from going out of the picture. It's sort of a, a stopper. But your eye goes to where I want it to go because the lightning is, is lighting uh, with a bright flash behind it. And um, uh, I, I, each picture is a different, uh, so has a different solution. There's one here that um, is kind of interesting because that is a Norman Rockwell drawing I own. And it was done in collaboration with his son, Peter. He did the drawing. And Peter is a sculptor. And uh, he was, Norman was asked to uh, design a tower in uh, Ringe, New Hampshire, I think it is, uh, as a tribute to women in war. Uh, and it's a four-sided tower that I would say is at least 10 or 15 feet wide. And that is probably the width of the uh, blown up that uh, Rockwell designed that Peter sculpted as a relief sculpture. And the sculpture itself is on all four sides, one being the Civil War with Clara Barton, another one uh, to uh, Molly Pitcher, I think it is, another one to the World War II era with the waves and wax, and very dramatic. Next to it is a picture of Clara Barton uh, giving out a, a hot soup or a coffee 
uh, to a, a Confederate prisoner that was in with the, uh, the Union wounded. And uh, this takes place in Fredericksburg at a famous building that's a National Historic Site that you see there. I visited that. But I had in mind using this as the inspiration for the main character. And I finally ended up coming up with this uh, idea, but I, I was dead set on getting Norman Rockwell into that painting. So if you look closely in the background, you'll see this exact pose with a wounded um, uh, soldier uh, being helped as a background figure. And, uh, and I, I felt that I would not be uh, charged with plagiarism. I, it was just, <laughs> I'd be charged with being uh, an idol, wor idol worshiper, I guess. The one in the corner with the guys on horseback racing around the corner is, uh, takes place in Gettysburg before the battle. I visited that spot and I love to find a building that still exists that uh, more or less looks like it did in those times. So whenever you see a building, you can be pretty sure that I visited that site personally. The main picture in the center is a painting of Washington crossing the Delaware. And there was quite a, a media fuss uh, because it's a totally different concept from the great Emanuel Lloyd's painting uh, because it, it, uh, I worked it out as factually as possible. And I think that as uh, great as the Lloyd's painting is, it was always well known that uh, it was not factually correct. Lloyd's was a German. He painted it in Germany in, 19, in 1851. Uh, and uh, there were many faults historically to it. I went uh, uh, to uh, where they crossed, and it's uh, the Delaware, the Jersey on one side, and uh, Pennsylvania on the other side. They're called Washington's Crossing, the name of the town, two towns as well, Washington's Crossing, Jersey, Washington's Crossing, Pennsylvania. And the two sides, the historians sort of fight over it, one side claims that Washington crossed in what was called a, a Durham boat at the time. The Durham boats were six, about 60 feet long, and they were used to haul ore, iron ore, down river. And uh, uh, they were about so high, it wasn't, couldn't, any general who was as smart as Washington would not have risked his life and the life of the army uh, crossing the river in a little rowboat. And he certainly wouldn't have been standing in a, in a, in a, a boat of that type. Also, there's a flag in that that didn't exist. So we uh, went and did the research with both, both parties. I don't remember which side, Pennsylvania or New Jersey, is the one that uh, uh, is in favor of the uh, depiction of the raft-like thing. But it's, it was a ferry boat of that era. And there is a book that has come out on it. There's archaeological evidence of how they crossed rivers in those days. And it obviously had to be done because there were wagons, and the wagons were very often pulled by six horses, a team of six horses. Now, they had to be lined up, and that's what determined the length of those ferry boats. They also brought cannon with them. They couldn't have gotten the cannon into the Durham boats. I rigged up my torches there for dramatic purposes to light Washington and focus the eye on Washington. And I figured out a way he could be standing. Uh, he would not have been in a Durham boat simply because I can't imagine his being packed in. And they were packed in like sardines. There was the officer corps, and this was the general of the army. My whole problem, uh, aside from the, uh, many of the other problems, was how do I get Washington to be higher than everybody else, the way that Lloyd's did of having him standing up in, in the rowboat. Well, in this kind of boat, probably the safest place would have been the cannon because it was a lash down kind of thing. And the, they would bring it in backwards. That, that rear of the cannon is where the, the boy with the red hat that says, uh, 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 and has a, a lantern, um, uh, is in the safest spot. But they want to see where they're going. So every, everything is a device to light Washington in front and to light him there. And uh, then figuring out, with the help of the experts on, on the raft uh, or the, the ferry boat, um, uh, we worked that out. And interestingly, uh, they pulled their way across. They did not um, row. 
and uh, it would be like, uh, here's, the, here's the, the river, and uh, you have to get across it. They didn't go back and forth with the cable. It was attached to a cable with pulleys, and they pulled the line if they had trouble, too. But what they did is they went at an angle downstream from Jersey, uh, well, Pennsylvania to, to, uh, to uh, Jersey. They would go downstream, poling, and they would not get carried downstream because they were hooked up with the pulleys to a cable line that went across. Then when it went to go back, they didn't go back and forth that way. They went downstream here, and then another cable downstream there, and then they had to get the ferry boat back, and they were pulled up by oxen or by strong teenage boys. So uh, these little facts make the, uh, uh, all of a sudden become uh, a, a picture.